Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. It's Wednesday, hump day. We've got to keep an eye on Thursday for some strong, maybe some scattered severe storms, but it's kind of an interesting setup. Nothing remotely close to Monday setup, but the timing might work in our favor. It may not be that bad of a day if the storms occur early, and I'm going to explain why as we kind of get into this setup. So let's show you the overall pattern right now. It's Wednesday. Today's another great day, honestly. We've got some really good conditions over the Carolinas. As you look off to the west, you kind of see what's heading our way. Big blob of moisture um, with a low pressure system moving across Missouri this morning. That's the weather maker we're watching. This is going to be the driver for our strong and severe storms tomorrow. It's going to be pushing in from the west and arrive in the Carolinas tomorrow. But it's likely that this is going to really crank up today and arrive overnight into early Thursday. If that happens, depending on how strong they are at that time, I know we don't love seeing storms in the morning or overnight. That might use up a lot of the energy. It'll occur at a time of day when it's cooler and deter afternoon storms. But there's a little bit of question about that as that pushes off to the east. So let's get into the severe weather outlook. Here's today's severe weather outlook. You can see the big area in medium to high back to our west. That's what's going to be heading our way tonight into tomorrow. You see kind of the, the Western Carolinas, and I knew this would happen. We'd see the Western Carolinas taken out of this uh, this area because that's an area where we're probably only going to see maybe a few isolated storms this evening. So I'm glad they took that area out because it really looks to be overnight and tomorrow. You see the severe, severe weather risk for your Thursday entire area under the low risk but now a new area of medium risk has been in, in developed here and what i think is interesting is i think this could be cut off here and be more in the eastern part of the state tomorrow just because of the timing but this is still possible depending on the speed of the system as it heads our way and i'll go ahead to to third or friday real quickly and see not much of a risk here let's quickly look at these the categories though um, probabilities of tornadoes tomorrow real quickly i'll pop that up 2% in green, so not crazy high, but still something to keep an eye on. Probability hails 5%. Wind probability, about 15%. So that's our primary concern um, with this setup tomorrow, as you can see. So let's get into the future cast. All right, so obviously nothing today. I'm going to start with the radar first, but then we're going to get into some of the nuts and bolts here of the forecast a little bit more than normal. Um, you can see the storms arriving. This is 9 p.m. tonight. So a Beyonce concert tonight should be fine at the tail end. Maybe a, a small chance, but most most of the concerts going to be fine. I'm not too worried about tonight. You see how that kind of falls apart. This is one o'clock in the morning, two a.m., three a.m., four a.m. Let's up this at five a.m. So at five a.m., we start to see scattered storms develop here. Look at this line back to the west. That's pretty nasty looking. Um, it will be weakening, but probably not enough that it's still going to produce some gusty winds, frequent lightning. We could see some warnings in the morning, certainly for for damaging winds. Pushes to the east, seven eight a.m. So we're getting after sunrise here. That's a pretty nasty line for eight o'clock in the morning. That's going to be a good wake up call uh, for a lot of folks if you're not up already. But that is going to be a rough morning tomorrow. And again, I do anticipate these being around in the morning. This is not all bad news. While I have to keep an eye on these, this, these are going to be less severe this time of day as opposed to five, six o'clock in the afternoon. Think about Monday. Those came in between four and seven prime time heating. Coming in in the morning after sunrise, that's the coolest part of the day. So they won't have all that energy. They're going to be having to feed off of the overnight heat and humidity, which isn't a lot, and the wind energy. So overall, this is a better time of day than for them to arrive. So as we go through 9 a.m., we'll go to 10 a.m., they push off to the east. The thing about it, these are lingering until the middle of the day. Remember, there's clouds around as well. These would use up all of the fuel and really deter anything from developing in the afternoon. If something develops in the afternoon, it's going to be because the sun comes back out. And there are hints that that might be more of a threat with this second line here. That's why I said Eastern and Central North Carolina and maybe Virginia, probably more of a risk as these push off to the east. As we go to four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, you can see not much develops on the back side of that. So this is all gonna be driven primarily by those morning storms. And let's keep our fingers crossed that continues. But let's look at some of the other parameters in there. So some of the things that will be driving these storms are gonna be thunderstorm fuel and wind energy, or what we call shear. So let's look at those real quickly. So a lot of bright colors on this map, but this is the thunderstorm fuel. The chart is on the top. So just above my head here, you can see, anytime you get to like a thousand Cape, is uh, CAPE is a, is, a, is a standard we use for thunderstorm fuel. It's convectively available potential energy. 
it's in joules per kilogram squared. So don't worry about the, the units. Just know that once you see brighter colors, there's more fuel for storms. <laughs> That's essentially what it is. This is the gasoline for thunderstorms. So we go into the overnight hours into tomorrow. And notice even in the morning hours, you know, here we are six o'clock in the morning, there's a little plume of higher Cape air or thunderstorm fuel. So there's enough around to keep the storms going, but nothing like the big plume down here, which you'll see as we go into the afternoon, that plume tries to build into Eastern North Carolina. And notice how the lower amounts back to the west. So this all points to less of an afternoon storm threat tomorrow and the morning storms kind of do everything. So that's a good sign. If that trend continues, we should see just morning storms and less of an overall severe threat. Let's look at wind shear real quickly. So this map's going to show what we call wind shear. It's basically wind changing direction with height. So this is a really good indication of how much wind energy storms have to feed off. A combination of shear, a trigger, and fuel, those three ingredients are what drive thunderstorms. Sometimes you can have lower amounts of two of the three, and the other one could be off the charts. That can still produce severe weather. You could have a little bit of all three that produce severe weather. But the worst case scenario is when you have all three off the charts. So, you know, think about the three main ingredients. It's all about the more, the more of it there is, <laughs> the worse it is. So we go into the early morning hours. And yeah, there's some wind energy coming across the mountains. So there's some pretty good wind shear with these but you saw the cape not a ton of it so all in all from a standpoint of a severe weather outlook the threat for severe storms early in the day is much lower than when we get into the afternoon because the shear isn't that bad and we start to see less in the way of, of thunderstorm fuel so all in all that's not off the charts kind of shear that we're seeing across the carolina so i i like the setup that we're seeing there right now let's take a look at two other parameters before we're done all right, this parameter is one you've seen me use before. The significant tornado parameter basically tells you the, the, the ingredients for severe weather. It's a composite index, which means it takes a lot of those other things, the shear, the fuel, the trigger, and tries to combine it into one product that shows you the risk for tornadoes. So we go through the overnight hours tonight into early tomorrow morning. We wake up right around you know, 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. There's a little bit down here. You can see maybe a half to one. So they're, they're definitely the risk for morning severe is there tomorrow. Um, I, I think that warrants a low end risk for sure. Whether it's a medium risk or not, it's a little questionable. A little bit higher, you see in Eastern North Carolina. So you, you're getting the vibe of what I'm feeling here. Yeah, there's a small risk in the morning, but to the east of us, uh, in Eastern North Carolina, you folks along I-95 and to the coast, this is probably more of a risk tomorrow. And the coast, look at that. I mean, that's a pretty big uptick there. So all in all, just to recap here, I'm gonna turn off the shear on here and we'll show you the severe weather outlook one more time. We're keeping an eye on the risk for some strong and severe storms tomorrow, but the timing could be more of a morning event for the Western Carolinas and more of an afternoon event for the Eastern Carolinas. So stay weather aware. I'll keep you up to date tonight and tomorrow for the potential for severe storms. After Monday's event, I know we're all hyper sensitive to severe weather, which is a good thing, but I also want you to know this is not the same type of setup. We will not see as many storm reports as we saw on Monday. Could we see an isolated tornado? Sure, but the wind threat is still our primary issue. 15% probability of damaging winds within 25 miles of every point on the map.